Even the fanciest things couldn't make me believe in us I'm here for pleasure, so don't you put pressure on me to give in to us All I need is your time devotion I don't wanna be so guys i'm gonna be using this wig stain that i found on amazon for 30 dollars which is actually very good because it's extremely sturdy and very very adjustable so i've had several expensive tripods in the past that have lasted for like only a week so when i found this one i was like girl i need to tell everyone about this the canvas head that i'm using is 22 inches which is equivalent to standard sizing if your head is larger go ahead and get a 23 inch canvas head or a 24 inch canvas head this is the wig cap that i I use because it's very stretchy and it fits me and my clients perfectly it's also very breathable and it comes with adjusting in the back time to put the wig cap on be sure not to pull on the wig cap this will adjust the sizing of your wig and you'll be making the wig technically larger instead naturally place the wig cap on the head I recommend using T-pins to hold the cap in place. You'll also need these T-pins to hold the closure and the bundles in place as well. Now girl, it's time to sew the closure down. First, let's place and center the closure using the front part along these two lines. So that little part right there. Next, you wanna go ahead and place the closure on the cap and slide it a teeny bit above the cap just a little bit before it and now you want to t-pin it. As you're laying the closure flat, make sure there is no space or gaps underneath the closure. This will make it bumpy and not lay flat. Instead, make sure it's laying extremely flat by just tugging on it a teeny bit and then going ahead and t-pinning it down. What I like to do is just braid the hair in the front just to get it out the way and I'm gonna be using a curved needle. You can be using black thread or brown thread, but my brown thread is not as sturdy, so I'm gonna use black thread. Usually with color hair or with blonde hair, you wanna go ahead and just use um, a nude color thread so that it looks seamless if you were to ever part it or anything. So to start sewing, I am going through the cap and I'm going through the closure. And I'm gonna just loop it around once pull it through to knot it, and do this about two to three times before I move on, okay? So let's go ahead and speed this part up. A lot of things in this video are gonna be repetitive, so you'll find that I'm not gonna slow it down a lot because I have several videos on me making a wig, but I feel like this is very self-explanatory once you see it the first time. What I also do is I don't use one needle to go from one side of the closure to the other because sometimes it will be a little bit all over the place and it won't be as center. You'll find that it moves a little bit, okay? To lock it, I'm gonna just twist this twice, put the needle through, and then do this three times. Another way to go ahead and lock it is by putting the needle through and then wrapping the thread around the needle twice. So there's two ways to kind of lock it that I do. So you'll see me change between both depending on how I'm positioned in the video. This is my end result, it's nice and neat and flat. Time to sew the bundles down, the best part. So to sew the bundles down, I'm gonna take one weft and I'm going to fit it nicely. I'm gonna put a T-pin in the middle just to hold it and usually with the first bundle, I don't like to cut it just for the first two bundles that I put in the back. So I fold it, but to avoid it being bulky, I kind of slide one weft on top of the other so kind of like how you see right now in the camera, I kind of can't really explain that. And I put the needle through it along with going through the weft and this is exactly what I usually do so that it's not bulky. Cause you do not want a bulky wig. You do not want it to be lumpy. You want it to still feel very nice and seamless even with folding the wefts.
when I get to this little teeny piece right here, instead of me like cutting this and starting off a new weft, I'm gonna go ahead and just lock that little piece in before I go ahead and fold this weft again. So for this video, I used four bundles, and this is here from Diamond Virgin Hair, in case you were interested. I did a video with them in the past before where I did no baby hairs, and you guys loved the nice, sleek hair. So I went ahead and I used their hair again to go ahead and create this look. So you see like how the middle part right there has a large gap, large section, and on the sides it's a little bit more narrow. What I like to do is just make short little pieces until everything is kind of evened out. get to the last row I like to make it as close as possible to the closure so that there are no gaps you do not see anything when you are doing your hair and it looks nice and seamless I do attach it a little bit to the closure and to the net so that it's nice and flat this part is very important because this kind of determines if your head is going to be a square top <laughs> on top or if it's going to lay nice and round so be very careful and keep that in mind when it comes to sewing the closure and the last row down now it's time for styling. I'm going to straighten it for now and just go straight into straightening the closure. Something important to keep in mind, when you get to the back, part a little piece of hair to cover up the wefts and the thread. And I'm going to be using some styling foam just to set the flyaways and keep those things down, honey. <laughs> After straightening, it's always important to use a hot comb or blow dryer or even a curling iron if that's all that you have, just to flatten out the roots as much as possible. Time to customize the unit. <laughs> so this is how it looks inside. It looks very neat to me, but there is this little piece of black part that we have to get rid of so that the closure looks as natural as possible when we put it on our head. So just cut this part out as neat as possible without cutting the lace or any threads that you may have that are exposed. It should look like this, girl. I like to put my wig inside out on the canvas head. And there's three types of combs you can use. I'm going to be using the clipping comb. And I'm going to put this on the back of the head and I'm going to sew through these little circles. And I'm gonna actually put five combs, but I only showed you guys three. So with the back comb, I put two on each side of that, and then I put two on each side of the front part. Now going into customizing, because it's colored, you don't have to do too much, but you have to do like a little something. So I hate that straight line in the front that you know a new closure has. So I went ahead and just kind of jagged up the hairline a little bit and kind of opened up the part so you could see something going on just so that it looks a little bit more natural and it doesn't look like you're wearing a hat wig. So, this is our end result. Super in love with this. I can't wait to throw it on in Soleil Honey. But we gotta cut the lace off of the front of the closure. And I'm gonna, I'm doing this very zigzaggy and jaggedy. <laughs> just made up my own two words. And remember this little piece that we had from pulling the closure up? Okay. Take a little piece of the cap and go through the closure and pull. When you pull, you're going to see it get a little bit more tighter. You saw that? Okay, that makes it sit even more snug on your head. It makes it lay even more flatter on your head without having to use a headband. So this is like my little method. Pretty sure everyone does it, but it works really well for me. Now for the other side, you're gonna do the same exact thing and then you are done and you can go ahead and put it on your head. Oh, you play, come